In this video I'm going to show you the basics of using Photolab in Digital Scrapbook Artist 2. So the first thing I did, I went over to my Photos tab, I clicked on Add, and I added these photos into this section. The nice thing is my original photos are still on my computer. These are just copies that the software creates for me, so when I drag them onto my blank page, none of these images are going to affect my original. Now what I'd like to do is click on this image here using my left mouse button, and then going to the top of the screen and clicking on the Photolab tab. Once I'm in Photolab, you can see I've got this entire area of my photograph and underneath here I've got a tray showing all of the other photographs that are currently on my blank page. I can easily click on any of these images and then work with them at the same time. If however I didn't want to have the tray open I could go right over here to this little arrow left click on it once and it'll drop the tray down. In order to reopen it of course you just left click on it or you could just hover over it and when you do that the tray will pop up. You can grab what you need and then you can start working on your photographs. Over here I have my photograph and I may want to adjust it just a tiny bit. At the top of the screen there's a couple of tabs. We have favorites, adjustments and effects. And inside all of these tabs you're going to see that there are other menus underneath. You can close them by clicking on them or you can expand them by left clicking on them as well. You can easily play with the intensity so I'm going to click on the intense feature and you can see that instantly my photograph has lightened up a little bit. Now there's also this slider and you can see that there's this point that moves wherever my mouse is. So if I hold down my left mouse button and I push it sort of up a little bit or maybe drag it in a little bit, you're going to see that there's a difference in my photograph. If I'm happy with this, I can click on the Commit button and it will commit to it. If I'm not happy with this, this is just a trial zone, I can try another thing. So I can go over to Sepia, click on it, it instantly goes into my trial zone. Again, it's not applied to my photograph unless I commit to it. So I'd have to click on Commit and then it would accept it. If at any time I want to get rid of this, I can easily go over here and click on Remove. Now you also have other features over here. You've got some lighting. You can also adjust the lighting by making it darker or making it a little bit lighter. You've got your contrast and the others are pretty much self-explanatory. Over here beside white balance you can drop this down so you've got a number of different ways. You've got cloudy, shade, daylight, fluorescent, etc. You can try playing with them and maybe moving these sliders a little bit to see if it gives your photograph a nicer look. If at any time you made a mistake, you're not happy with with what you did, just go over here. In all of these areas you have a reset setting. Click on that, it will just reset it to the way that it was. Now what I want to do is go into this eye and I want to remove the red eye. So to do that, I'm first going to go to the top of the screen and click on my zoom in button. I'm going to click on it a few times. If I've made it too large, I can go over here and I can zoom out. I can hold down my left mouse button and I can move this around. I can also move things by using the scroll bar at the bottom and at the sides. Now in order to get rid of the red eye, it's very simple. You just go to the top of the screen and you click on the red eye tool. When you do that, you'll notice that this whole area is grayed out and so is this area. The only thing that's activated is the tool settings. Red eye is the only feature you can use currently. So I'm going to go over to this eye. I'm going to hold down my left mouse button. I'm going to drag it to the right and then I'm going to drag it down. And once I've created this little cover over the eye, I'll just go over here and I'll click on the green check mark and now you can see that the red eye is completely gone. So I now have a photograph that I can easily use. Next thing I'm going to do is go down to my tray and I'm just going to pull up this image right here. As you can see there is this pretty big blemish so I want to get rid of that. So to do that I'm going to go right over here and click on the spot repair tool. Once I click on it again everything will be grayed out. The only area that will be activated is the spot repair. Now the first thing I want to do is go right onto the area that I want to remove and I'm going to left click on my mouse once. Don't worry about where this is. This is the opposite side of this and anything in this area is going to be transported over here. So first thing I'm going to do is just hold down my left mouse button in the center of the circle. And I'm just going to move it sort of out of the way by dragging it. Now I can increase the size of both circles just by going over here to the size and make it larger that way or at any point I could go over here and wait till my circle turns into a double sided arrow and then I can just drag it and make it a little bit bigger or make it a little bit smaller. 
You also have a couple of other options. You can play with the opacity on this. So if you wanted it to not heal all the way through, you wanted a little bit to show through, you could do that. And if you don't want it to just heal, you can go over here and then select Clone. And cloning will give you anything that's in this area over here. Once you're happy with your selection, you can click on the check mark and the blemish is now gone. So next I'll take this photograph right here and I'm going to apply a black and white effect to it. I'm currently using this button over here which gives me a whole view of the image and I'm going to go over here to the before and after so I can get a better view of it. You have a couple of different before and after options. If at any time you don't like the line right where it is, you can move it around and you can get your better before and after look. I want to apply a mask to the umbrella. So let's just make this a little bit bigger and I'm just going to move this over here. To do that I'm going to go over to my trial zone which is currently black and white and this button I'm going to left click on it and click on new mask. Give the software a second or two to analyze your image. If you wanted to you can highlight this area and you can type in the name of your mask. I'm just going to leave this as mask 2. Over here is your brush that will add and your brush that will remove in case you made a mistake. And over here you've got your brush size. You can make this bigger or smaller. You've got your grow tolerance. If you set it all the way to the right hand side, anything you start to draw will automatically get filled in. And if you send it all the way over to the left hand side, the only parts that are going to get selected are the width of your brush size. So I'm just going to change the grow tolerance again. And of course, if you make a mistake, you could always go over here and you could remove whatever portion you made a mistake on. Next thing, go over to your expand button and you're just going to slide this over to the right hand side so that you can see your entire mask and you can make sure that nothing from your image is showing through or is not fully covered. I'm going to leave this as select and I'll just accept it. You can see that what's basically happened right now is I've got a mask, I've got a photograph that is in color, and my umbrella is in black and white. Now if I wanted to change this around, I could easily do that. I could go right back over here, left click, and then click on Edit Mask. Once that opens up, you go over to your mode, you pull this down, and instead of selecting, which is the only area that is going to be affected, you go to Protect, so that this area is not affected, Click on the green check mark and now you can see your photograph is in black and white and your umbrella is in color. So you can play around with that. You can just of course go back to your before and after if you wanted to. Another thing that I'd like to show you is let's just say you wanted to add something over here, maybe a feature that you like such as the kaleidoscope maker. You can easily do that by going over to the top of the screen, left clicking, and clicking on Distort and then Kaleidoscope. Now I'm just going to close my before and afters and what I'm going to do is make this a little bit smaller. I'm going to go over to my Kaleidoscope and I'm going to drop it down by clicking on the arrow pointing down. And I'm just going to play with these sliders a little bit and then I'll play with this one. Then you just basically stop when you have the Kaleidoscope that you like. Now I want to save this. To do that I'm going to go to the top of the screen and click on the Save icon and I'm going to name it. Select the category you wanted to appear in. I'm going to select Fun Stuff and click on OK. And now it's in my Fun Stuff area. And let's just say I've decided I no longer need that one. I can easily go up here, left click once, left click on Manage Favorites. I want to expand my favorites, expand my Fun Stuff, click once on my Kaleidoscope to select it, and then just click on Delete and Close. And now it's gone. You can actually have a lot of fun playing with your adjustments and your effects and playing with the different features on the right hand side. If you want to learn more about Photolab on your own, just go to the bottom right hand corner and click on the help button to read all about the great features that you can accomplish with Photolab. That concludes this video. Thank you for watching.